Picking up where we left off, we have begun to create a custom palette. It has one item so far, dry ink from the pens category. Now before I add another item, I'm going to go to painter preferences and change the cursor. What I have now is the footprint of the brush, the ghost, if you will, and instead of using the ghost, I'll go to interface and preferences, brush ghost. I'm going to choose enhanced brush ghost and what this does it will give me information visually about the tilt of my stylus. So as I twist my stylus around at a steep angle, you'll see what that does and an angle that's perpendicular to the tablet, it looks like a little spot and it changes as I twist my stylus. Now that's going to be important for this next item I want to show you. It's a pencil Go to the pencils category and I'll choose real 6B soft pencil and I will do a shift drag into the custom palette so that we can have that stroke in there. And when I make a stroke using the upright position for my stylus, it looks like that. But if I tilt my stylus and you can see from the enhanced brush ghost that it's an extreme tilt, here's what I'm going to get. I'm going to actually twist my grip completely so that I'm holding this at a steep angle and it's giving me some wonderful strokes that imitate what you get if you hold an actual pencil on the side. Let's just look at a photo of what that is doing and this gives you a good idea how you can take advantage of that quality of this particular pencil. Let's add a blender. So we'll go to the blenders category pointed stump. That's a little too big. Let's go to grainy water. That's going to do nicely, so I will shift drag grainy water. I'm not too happy with the icon here. That doesn't tell me what I need to know, so I'm going to change that icon by doing a right click or control click on the Mac and tapping it. I can choose a text view. And so now it tells me very clearly that that is a grainy water. So we now have dry ink, real 6B soft pencil, grainy water, and let's choose an eraser as well. So when I go to the erasers group, I think I'll choose a real pointy eraser, and that looks fine. Drag with the shift key down, and if I want to, I can move this over. I can rearrange these as I like. Already, even with four items, it's taking up quite a bit of space on my desktop, so I think I'd like to make these more compact. How about small icons? That's much better. There's another choice that I have, but I'll have to go to Preferences once again, and I'll do that now. So if we go back to Preferences Interface, we will see that you have a choice in Brush Icons in Custom Palette between Stroke, which is what we've been using, or Category. Let's choose category and add some other items to our custom palette. We could put another pen in there, and I like the scratchboard tool, which has a nice smooth look with some subtle changes in width based on pressure. So I'm going to add that by doing a shift drag. And this time, it's the icon for the category that comes into my palette. And this is a nice compact item, so it might be a good idea to change the dry ink to a category icon. So all I have to do is remove it by using the shift key and dragging it out. And now if I drag it back in, it comes in as a category icon. But now how do I tell the difference between these two? Clearly I can go to the text view by doing that right click or control click and now text view shows me okay scratch board tool and I'm just going to hold the shift key and move it over a little bit so now I can differentiate between them there's another way to create a custom icon for your custom palette there's so much customization available in painter especially this version of painter and we'll get to more of them in future movies make a color change here make that red and use dry ink. I want to create a nice ink stroke and with my rectangular selection tool I'm going to select that 
So now I'm going to do the right click or control click and capture custom icon. So when I click on that, this little stroke that I made, this little squiggle, is showing up as my icon for that item in the custom palette. Now you're going to organize your custom palettes and import, export, rename them, delete them, and so on by using the custom palette organizer that you can find in your window menu. And when we open that up, we see that we have custom four is what we've been doing. I'm going to rename that and call that drawing. Click OK. I'm going to get rid of this one that I don't need by deleting it. And I'm going to choose drawing and export it to my desktop. So let's call it drawing. I get to choose a different name if I wish. Well, I'll put it in with my custom palette. So save that. Now, you're going to be provided with custom palettes for a number of projects as we go through these lessons. And the way you access them is with the import command. So if I choose import, I can now go and find any of the items that I'm looking for. When I go to basic drawing, for example, it will open. There it is. Then I can click done. Now I have a different custom palette. I have two of them open at the same time, which is just fine. You will also be able to add commands and paper and other kinds of media to your custom palettes. And we will be looking at more of them in future movies.